Carmen, we got the Vikings and the Rams here on Thursday Night Football. And, you know, we're recording this on a Thursday. So, obviously, there are some late scratches that could happen here, which are heavily involved in this game because we've got Cooper Cup potentially coming back. It looks like he is going to play. Puka Nakua is kind of like, okay, that they're leaning towards him playing, but we'll see once we get down to game time. It's a Vikings team that's coming off a really tough loss, a close loss against the Detroit Lions. And it's a Rams team that could be the best version of the Rams that we have seen so far this season as they have gone through injuries. What do you think the matchup that matter is, matters here most for this game? What do you got? Uh, I go straight to the trenches with something like this because I think this Rams team, when you've been talking about the last few weeks when Cooper Cup has been out and Puka Nakua has been out and this offense really just hasn't been what we're used to seeing from Sean McVay and the Rams and Matthew Stafford, you look at the defensive side of the ball and the strength of this team has been this defensive line. And so I go Rams defensive line against Minnesota's offensive line, which is again, one of the best offensive lines in football has one of the best left tackles in football, which is Christian Derisov, 79.3 PFF grade there. And he manhandled some of these Lions defenders last week. And yes, they're without Aiden Hutchinson, but that doesn't mean that there still wasn't a ton to account for. They were doing all sorts of different stunts up front. It was very different than what we had seen from the Lions when they had Aiden Hutchinson in, which, you know, their entire defensive front kind of revolved on getting Aiden Hutchinson one-on-one matchups. That was not the case this time. So Christian Derisaw was all over the place and trying to, I mean, he's doing spin moves and he just showing off that athleticism that makes him one of the best left tackles in football. And so now he's going to be going up against a Rams defensive line that, I think is highlighted this year by Jared Verse, the, the rookie who has the yeah. highest pressure rate in the league right now at 20, 23.6%. So this is a strength on strength type of matchup. And I think it's going to determine a lot when you're talking about how much, you know, these quarterbacks have time to get the ball off and to, to operate these offenses. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going trenches. Now, I, I'm going with the trenches as well. And I think that's a good shout out on that side of the ball, but I'll go to the other side of the ball. I'm going to talk sure. about, the Rams offensive line specifically versus the blitz. When we've talked about the Rams offensive line, they've gone through a lot of injuries really week one is when unfortunately a lot of those starters started to go out with injury. And I feel like over the last six, seven weeks, we've kind of just in our head thought, man, this Rams offensive line is just not going to be very good given the injuries that they have gone through. But I will say over the last couple of weeks, if you haven't really been paying too much attention to it, they have been playing better over the last four weeks specifically. So I think that's a decent enough stretch of time. You know, it's not necessarily like, oh, it's just a two-week stretch or something like that. Four games. So over the last month, 69.5 team blocking grade in that in that time span. That's not too bad. Yeah, Again, a PFF grades, they're different than grades that you would get in school. People look at, you know, the grades in the 60s and they go like, oh, that's terrible. It's a D plus. That means they're really bad. Not necessarily. I feel like grades in the mid 60s are kind of like, okay, you're you're doing your job adequately. So this is even a little bit better than that. They've got a 60.5 team blocking grade versus the blitz over the last four weeks, which I think is very topical for this matchup going up against Brian Flores defense, because the only defense in the NFL, the blitzes more than the Minnesota Vikings are the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Todd Bowles, Brian Flores sort of cut from the same cloth in that regard. They want to pressure you all night long. And so that's what they're going to do. That's what the Vikings are going to do. They're going to blitz and the Rams really haven't been terrible against the blitz. I thought I was going to look up these numbers and say, oh boy, it's going to be a long day at the office for the Rams offensive line, but they really haven't been that bad at it. And Matthew Stafford been in this league a long time. He understands where blitzes are coming from. He understands where the ball needs to go when he needs to throw hot, things like that. So that to me is a major matchup that matters because the Rams aren't as bad as you think against the blitz. We know that's what the Vikings are going to do. And if they can hold up well, I'm already peeking at your plus factor here. I, I I know who you have here, and I think that Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua, that could be a big difference with those guys in the game versus the Blitz especially. Yeah, and but what is so tough about Brian Flores' defense is that you, de- you don't necessarily know where the pressure is coming from. They lead the league in unblocked pressures, which is absolutely insane given the fact that everybody knows the reputation of his defense at this point. It's just that he's really, really good at simulating pressures, at bringing different guys to the line, and then dropping guys that you just don't expect to drop. Um, And that's why, you know, he has a chess piece in Andrew Van Ginkle that can drop into coverage, but he can be part of the pass rush. That's the difficulty here. It's what Jared Goff did so well last week, and you're going to need to see Matthew Stafford 
same so that he can get the ball to my plus factors, which are the most obvious plus factors when you're talking about this Rams team. And that's getting Cooper Cup back and potentially Puka Nakua. Like you said, we don't know the status of him quite yet. He is questionable coming into this game. There hasn't been anything as of this recording um, saying whether or not he's actually going to play. But even if it's just Cooper Cup that's coming back, that should get this offense going that just really hasn't so far. I mean, Matthew Stafford this season among quarterbacks, 56.5 PFF grade, which ranks 30th. That's not what we're used to seeing out of Matthew Stafford. Uh, And you really need to get this going via the pass, get some chunk plays. And what Cooper Cup can do so well is you isolate Cooper Cup in those one-on-one matchups. And then Matthew Stafford targeting single coverage Uh, 502 yards, three touchdowns, one interception. He's got about a 50% completion rate on that right now. That should go up when you get a guy like Cooper Cup back. I was, that was, it's always tough to navigate sentences when that when the name Cooper Cup is in there. It's hard. It it is really, it's, it's a tongue twister in and of itself. My plus factor in this one, I, one of us had to talk about obviously the Rams receivers that were coming back. And obviously there's a lot of things that the Vikings are doing well. feels like we're kind of light on Vikings analysis here in this one, but we know the Vikings are a really good football team. They're one of the best football teams in the NFL. I think their resume to this point kind of speaks for itself. My plus factor, though, is Kyron Williams. And again, one of us had to talk about the receivers because it it is an obvious plus factor in this one. But so is Kyron Williams, because to me, he has been the steady presence within this offense, whether they've had Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua going back to last year or even just this year, getting needing to get something on offense. He's got a nine game consecutive touchdown streak, which is one shy of the NFL record set by Greg Bell. So if he gets another touchdown, rushing touchdown in this game, that will tie the NFL record there. And that just goes to show you how consistent this guy has been. So, yes, I think everybody's going to talk about Matthew Stafford and these receivers coming back because it is a big deal. But make no mistake. It's not just the fact that these two wide receivers are back and then they're going to completely abandon the run. They're absolutely not. Kyron Williams is a major part of what this team does on the ground and just their offensive philosophy overall. And that needs to continue to be the case because if the Vikings can really stop Kyron Williams, then even with two great receivers coming back, when you become one dimensional like that, it's, it's really tough to move the ball no matter what. So to me, Kyron still needs to be the guy that they've been able to lean on through the first seven weeks of the season. So he is my plus factor in this game. 